Hey everybody, welcome back. Right now we're gonna have a little look at Dead Space Extraction, a Dead Space prequel from Nintendo Wii coming out soon. I've got the executive producer of the game here, Steve Papoutsis from Visceral Games. How you doing, Steve? Doing great, nice to see you. All right, good to see you. So uh, you also have a guest along with you right here, is that correct? Yeah, this is Matt Bendett. He's uh, our marketing PM for Dead Space Extraction. All right, Steve, what are we gonna take a look at right now? So we're gonna look at uh, chapter four in the game. Uh, what's happened so far, the setup is, uh, the marker's been extracted from the planet and a group of four individuals have got, kind of been thrust together and they're escaping the colony Aegis 7 and they're seeking sanctuary up on the Ishimura. So right here you're looking at the wreck, the wreck room on the ship and uh, they picked up another survivor with them and uh, they're, they're looking around. This is our look around camera you're seeing. It allows uh, the player can look around by using the nunchuck. There so, it is. So obviously a few big differences from Dead Space, right? It's a, it's a first person perspective and it's uh, what you were describing to me a while ago as a sort of a guided experience, right? Yeah, we're calling it a guided first person experience. Uh, other people are calling it a rail shooter. We're, we're taking a lot of effort to make it different and innovate uh, with our branching paths, our look around camera opportunities, stasis, telekinesis, strategic dismemberment, our zero gravity sections. The original Dead Space, obviously known for that really intense atmosphere. Uh, what sort of, uh, how have you gone about translating that onto the Wii hardware? So that has been one of our biggest goals, is to try to nail that same mood, look, visual quality that we had in the original Dead Space. And what we've done is, uh, by having it as more of a guided experience, we're, we're focusing more on that and making sure that we're delivering on that, because that's what fans of the original Dead Space have come to expect. Okay. Now, how, how exactly does this control system work here? So, with the Wii Remote, you're able to aim. If you want to perform an alternate fire, you just rotate the Wii Remote 90 degrees. You'll see that the, the reticle will change shape. You press the B button to fire. You have melee on the nunchuck. The look around camera, again, is on the analog stick. You can fire off stasis with the C button, and our timed reload works on the Z button. What, um... What sort of different enemies and weapons are, are, are we going to expect in Extraction? So we've got all the original weapons from Dead Space, and we've got three all-new weapons, two of which I can mention. One is the rivet gun, which is kind of your default weapon, and the second weapon is the arc welder, which you'll see in the demo here in a little bit. And uh, as far as enemies go, we have all of the original enemies returning uh, with about four all-new ones, and we have some all-new bosses as well. So we're taking a look at some of these uh, necromorphs right here. Obviously, it looks like, well, we've got the flamethrower going on right now, but uh, um, dismemberment, still a big part of the game, right? Absolutely. So Matt's able to aim for the limbs. That's the best way and most effective way to take down enemies. As you can see right there, Matt stasis, stasis these slashers and is just blasting off their limbs. Uh, and as you notice, around the outside of the reticle, you see these little blue marks, and that indicates how much stasis you have. So that's the way you're able to quickly see how much stasis you have. Another thing fans may notice, uh, in addition to being first person, is that we don't have the rig displayed anymore, because you're not looking at Isaac's back. So Matt can just hit a button on the Wii remote, and it'll bring up our mini rig, which will actually show uh, how much health you have, the exact amount of ammunition you have, and uh, how many shots you have in your current weapon. Matt, why don't you go ahead and just bring up the mini rig so people can see that real quick. And there you can see it down there. It also shows you how, ma how many upgrades you've applied to your weapon. So uh, let's go ahead and start taking some up questions from the audience here. Awesome. Um, we've got one from Connor in Edmonton who's wondering, will we see bosses in the game? Absolutely, yeah. I just mentioned we, ha we have a few of those in store for sure. Jose from Mesa who's wondering, will the game support Wii Motion Plus? Uh, hey Jose, no, the game is not going to support Wii Motion Plus. Uh, being that we are driven with just the pointer, uh, we don't need that. Uh, the one-to-one -one interaction with the actual pointing device works really great. No need for those fancy gyroscopes in there? No, yeah, they're really cool though. It's yeah. fun in, in a lot of the other games at the show. It, it just works awesome, but we don't need it in our game. Uh, we got a question from Jimmy from Windsor who's wondering um, the level of fright in the game. How scary is it compared to the original? Fright level. I know that's something that's uh, near and dear to your heart, right? Yeah, yeah. On the original Dead Space, I, one of the things that I worked on was specifically the horror moments in the focus areas of the game. So uh, we're absolutely aiming to have the horror and the terror and the tension that we had in the original, for sure. 
see it. Uh, the questions definitely keep pouring in. Um, let's see here. Oh yeah, one uh, one I forgot to bring up a while ago is that it's not just a single player game anymore, right? That's right, it's actually co-op and uh, people can jump in and jump out at any time. You don't have to start a new save or anything like that. If I wanted, I could pick up a controller right now, hit a button on the Wii remote and team up with Matt and experience the entire story with them. How does that work as far as camera goes? Is it uh, several reticles on the same screen? Is it split screen? Can you like branch away from each other? No, it's uh, two reticles on the same screen. But the camera, when you get the camera opportunities that you saw a moment ago, you're act that will actually alternate. We're really making sure that player two doesn't feel like they're just along for the ride. So in the puzzle sequences, the camera opportunities, uh, we're actually alternating so people get equal control of those moments. Uh, we've got a question from uh, Eduardo from Sao Paulo, Brazil, who's wondering about the characters in the game. Is is uh, Isaac going to make a return, or are we going to see a brand new cast in there? Is that something you can even talk about? Uh, we can't talk too much about that, Eduardo, but thanks for asking. Uh, we do have, but I will tell you a little bit about the characters we do have. So the primary team of people in the game consists of uh, Nathan McNeil, who Matt's playing right now. He is a PSEC detective uh, from Aegis 7. Lexine Murdoch, who's a surveyor's assistant. Warren Eckhart, who is a CEC executive. And Sergeant Gabriel Weller, who is an Ishimura uh, security guard. And we also have a few other characters that are going to be key to the story. All right, Lars from Denmark is wondering about those mind-bending zero-G moments from the original. Are they going to, are they making the transition? Are they making the transition Lars. here? Yeah, hey Lars, thanks for the question. Um, yes. In, a, in one word, yes. Zero G in effect. All right. We're going to have that. Let's see here. Marco wants to know the big question here. Marco from Sao, Sao Paulo wants to know, how long is a single player campaign? It's Brazil everywhere. I know. Brazil Two people? Great. Brazil. We love our Brazilian Just logic. love it. What, what's Marco want to know? <laughs> he wants to know, how long is a single player campaign? How long is it? Well, what sort depends. of uh, length should we expect? What sort of replayability should we So expect? I've been saying it, we're hoping that it's going to be about as long as the original Dead Space. Um, when we've been you know, focus testing and showing the game to people, um, this particular chapter that Matt's in, when you play it from top to bottom, is taking people on average about an hour. So I'm hoping it comes in about as long as the original Dead Space, which could be anywhere from 8 to 12 hours. But it really depends on how skilled you are, how quickly you get through it. Uh, but for fans, just so you know, uh, when you complete a level, you'll actually be able to play it again on a harder difficulty if you choose to. And we'll also unlock challenge mode, which is something we haven't really talked a lot about. And that'll allow players to go back through and compete with one another to get a high score. So. We're hoping that those things combined with the length of the story is going to be a great, a great thing for, for fans and people that want to play the game. All right, we've got a, uh, another question here from uh, Godu from Austin, who is wondering, how did you arrive at the decision to uh, make Extraction for the Wii as opposed to other consoles? OK, so when we were making Dead Space, uh, we were talking about it. And we decided, well, one, we didn't have a game on the Wii. That was number one. And two, we had a, a lot of story to tell. We had the comics, we had the animated feature, and we just thought it'd be great to bring Dead Space to fans of the Nintendo Wii. So that was kind of the decision. I personally really liked the Wii, and I was looking for a really fun game for it. So Glenn and I were talking, and the decision was made, let's, let's go make a game for the Wii. All right. Um, let's see here. Uh, Marcus, Marcus Sagasta from Enid is wondering, any plans to maybe down the road port this game to other consoles? Interesting. Interesting idea. Maybe file that away in the old memory banks for a while. We'll put that away. Like that idea. Thanks for the question. Um, we, we're actually getting quite a few questions about the overall difficulty of this game in comparison to the original. Well. Um, well, that's a good question. I don't know how to really answer it. I mean, I mean, the first did have several options. I imagine you'll still have several difficulty options this yeah. time. So when you start the game up, we're going to kind of put you in what we're calling our normal difficulty setting. And then as you progress through, as I mentioned, when you finish a chapter, you're able to go back right away and play it on a, on a harder difficulty. And if you beat it on that difficulty, you can bump it up one more time. Uh, but we're, we're tuning right now for our normal base level and then you know, as we as we do our play tests and, and get more feedback from fans and people that get a chance to get hands on, we'll be adjusting it. So 
So what's this uh, this environment we're in right now? How does it uh, relate to the uh, the overall story? Yeah, so this is the Ishimura. Um, we've gotten up into the ship, and this is right outside of the mess hall. So this is one of our glow worm areas. So what Matt's doing is he's shaking his Wii remote first to get that slasher off of him, but he's actually shaking the Wii remote to create a light around himself that so that he could see the necromorphs. It also uh, kind of attracts their attention. So you can kind of decide not to do it. It's going to be harder to see the enemies, or you can use the glow worm to light up the area so you can get better shots off for dismemberment. And Matt was also playing around just a minute ago with the arc welder, which is one of the new weapons. And it actually shoots out an arc of electricity between enemies. And uh, the alternate fire for that is a big ball of electricity that gets shot out that when it explodes, uh, sends out arcs again and deals massive damage to enemies. I forget if you mentioned this earlier, but are the weapons in this game upgradable like the original? Absolutely. Matt, why don't you, uh, yeah, why don't you switch to one of your weapons that you've upgraded if you could. Um, you'll notice those little, those little blue dots right there. Uh, that indicates that the weapon's been upgraded. So Matt's already upgraded his flamethrower once during this little play session right here. So you pick him up on the fly, immediately gets applied to your weapon. Right there. Nice, nice, I like it. Yeah, it definitely looks like all that all that atmosphere is uh, it's looking really good on the Wii. Thank you. Definitely a definitely a pretty game. And by pretty, of course, I mean scary as hell. So, you know, obviously what you're going for. Thank you. Yeah, that, that's what we're aiming for. Uh, Anders from Copenhagen is wondering about the possibility of a collector's edition. Any plans for that at the moment? Andrew, Copenhagen. Hello. Uh, yeah, that, that's something, again, we've been talking about. Matt and I have been chatting about that. And would be kind of cool, right, Matt? What? Collector's edition, thingamabob. It would be. We'll see. That's a we'll see from Matt. <laughs> it's a definite maybe. That's a, there you go. <laughs> Absolutely maybe. <laughs> All right. Sounds good to me. Uh, Curtis H. from Lowell, is, uh, he's, he said that he noticed that you can pull up paths in the game. Exactly how guided is it? Um, yeah, so at the beginning of, of the play session that we had here on the show, uh, Matt was able to select an alternate path. So we used the locator. If you remember from the original Dead Space, Isaac had the locator that would map out where his objectives were. In our game, we're using it when there's opportunities to kind of branch off the main path. So you're able to pick that. And, and jump on and off of certain paths. And also, there'll be other rooms. If people remember those purple power nodes that we had in the original, if you see any of those near any doors as you're passing through the game and actually shoot those, you'll go off the path and you'll be able to find little equipment closets and other goodies and whatnots. All right, Steve, well, you know I'm a fan of the original game, so I'm looking forward to this one. When, when can we see it available in stores? September 29th. All right, Steve, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Sean. All right, everybody, so that's Dead Space Extraction. So we're going to go ahead and go from scary monsters in outer space to scary rollover car crashes in Forza 3. Take a look.